um, in your role as coach there, you know, for a, a few weeks now, you are enjoying it? Yeah, definitely. Very enjoyable. Look like it all happened quite fast where, you know, PK headed overseas and, you know, we're very proud and, you know, he's another Australian coach that's sort of the, that's putting us on the world map. So, you know, with Ange and Muskie and, and everyone else that's overseas, they're all like trailblazers and they're getting us more attention. So, you know, we're all really happy. At first, it was a bit of a shock, obviously, that your head coach leaves just very quickly. But, you know, everyone was really proud and, and he, he deserves he deserves that opportunity. Man, what's your sort of coaching style? You know, you, you, it's similar to, to your dad or you've got your own sort of style? Um, probably quite similar, but there's obviously maybe I've got my different parts that, that I like to do. But, you know, we, we want to play, and myself as well, we want, I want the ball all the time. And we want to play in an exciting brand and, you know, and give joy to people when they come to watch, that they say. And, 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 and in, in a few games, we've had people come up and say, you were really enjoyable watch. And I think that's the biggest credit you can sometimes get as a coach and, and for the players as well. What... Um I mean, you know, Western United, what are you expecting from them? No, we've got Perth Glory. Sorry, Perth, mate, sorry. No, that's okay. Um, oh, look, they're, they're also, they, they want to they wanna have the ball and we, I've sort of analysed them throughout the week and their last couple of games. So, again, similar. We know what, what, where they can be strong and, and we'll, we'll, we'll try again. We'll just, we won't change too much. We, we sort of feel where the, we want to be the dominant, imposing team. So... We're playing at home, double head up at Amy Park. We're really looking forward to it and um, hopefully another three points to keep pushing us up the table. And after what happened, uh, you know, last weekend, like obviously in the Melbourne Derby uh, uh, with the men, what kind of atmosphere are you expecting there, mate? Uh, look, we hope, you know, hopefully it doesn't keep the people away, that this is just a one-off. It, it was ugly scenes that we wish we never see in football and, you know, people like that don't deserve to come to games because... You know, if the World Cup shows it, just how much happiness and joy that, that football can bring to people's lives. So, you know, for a lot of people, it's an escape when you come to the to the stadium. You want to go there. You want to have fun. You want to support your team. You want to watch good football. So that that's just what we focus on, and that's what we want to give to our fans. And and again, we've got an opportunity tomorrow night to showcase that, and alongside with the men. So it's always it's always a nice occasion when we we're all there together, and you know, hopefully we can. Walk away, both teams maximum points, and um, and then yeah, build into the new year for our for the fixtures ahead. Hey, right, uh, sorry, right, uh, Daria, was the was the coaching path always one that you wanted to, to like go on? Yeah, I think so. I think you know I'd, I've pretty much always been involved with football. That's probably all I know. So it was it was something that I was you know even when I was playing, probably in my mid twenties, that I started thinking about, and the the Barcelona with Pep Guardiola that sort of really caught my attention, and I really started to you know, analyze and see what they're doing, not just as a player, but as a, you know, thinking about the future. So, and then obviously with that as well, being a coach, so you always sort of follow. And then, yeah, no, but it's been really enjoyable and um, yeah, hopefully I have a, a long career ahead of me in the coaching game as well. And being in Melbourne City, who, you know, one of the country's biggest clubs and got great backing in that, does that add to the pressure for you or not? No, not really. I, you know, just I just want to enjoy and, and keep learning. I'm still a young coach, and this season again, the idea was to be an assistant and to to learn underneath my father, who's got a wealth of experience. And so, but again, these things happen in football. They're sometimes unpredictable, and I've been thrown into the deep end. But I feel like I'm prepared. I'm enjoying it. The the group I have, they're unbelievable, and the staff. So you know, it's 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 unreal, and the club itself is. I couldn't be I couldn't be more happier than than where I am right now. And how's the fitness of your squad? Yeah, looking good. Everyone looks good. We've got, a, we've got obviously a bit of a shorter turnaround this week compared to Perth. But again, it's the challenge that we've been given and um, we've got players ready coming in. So now everyone's, everyone's really ready. We had an excellent training session yesterday, Christmas morning. So now the girls are excited. They, they, they can't wait to, to go out tomorrow night and again, showcase their talents. How do they feel about training on Christmas Day? Yeah, that's, that's what I was a bit worried about. But again, like I said, they were they were phenomenal. They were, you know, I didn't have to say anything. They they drove the session, and now I told them at the end I was really proud, and I almost had to force them out of here to, to go enjoy their Christmas. So now they're an unreal group, and you know I'm, I'm very very lucky to have, have a team like the one I've, I do. Obviously, you mentioned it's a quick turnaround since Canberra. You spoke about last week the Western United game, putting your chances on a different day. You walk over the three points. Yep. That's kind of what happened against Canberra. The shots go in, get the three points. What do you make of the game? There, what do you take away from it? 
Uh, I think in patches we were we were good, but probably not as much control as what we had against Western. So a few sort of technical errors, maybe a bit of fatigue. And look, it's it's a hard place to go, Canberra. It's never never an easy trip, and we've got the shorter turnarounds now. But I think in large patches when we played we played well, we were we were really really good. And like I've said many times to to everyone and to the ladies that sometimes I forget how young they are. Like I had a 16 year old, two 17 year olds, 19, 20 year olds, 18 year olds. So you know, I think, you know, for them, they're now learning a lot and it's now, yeah, some, I, I can be maybe a bit too harsh sometimes that I forget how young this squad actually is. And you mentioned, of course, the short turn. I already saw a few changes last game, Letitia McKenna, Chelsea was at both coming in. Can we expect to see a few more changes this week or is it kind of just business as usual? Uh, look, uh, with us, it's, it's business as usual. We've got, we've got good depth and um, we might look to make a few changes. We'll have a look today how everyone's pulled up and, you know, we've got to, we've got to take care of everyone and... There's some that ran big numbers in Canberra that pushed themselves, so we're trying to get you know minutes into everyone because the next next block where we've got three games in six days, so we've probably been given the the hardest schedule there. But it, you know it is what it is, and we we prepare for that, and we need to we need a whole squad, not just eleven players. Of course, we've seen Skipper and Checker out for a couple of games with illness. Hannah Wilkinson's been slowly building up from her quad injury. Are both in line to have a chance at playing tomorrow night, or how are they both tracking? Uh, we're, again, we'll see. So we'll, we'll take into consideration today's session. So Wilkie more than likely will play tomorrow night. And um, and then, yeah, with Checks, we'll see because she was sick for quite a while. So she's missed a lot of training in that time. And, um, yeah, we'll make a decision today with how everyone feels and we'll see what the best thing is to do for the balance of the squad. And just the last one, obviously, you've been asked about pretty much every week, but Danny Yarlich, she's just been on fire, just getting better every game, it seems. First professional goal on the weekend. Just to comment on how she's been going and what you've seen in training, it's just getting yeah, goes to the level she's playing at. Look, she's she's very talented. For again, sometimes, like I said, I forget she's 16, and we probably uh, demand a lot from her. But again, that's sort of what what I want is to prepare her for bigger and better things because everyone sees her talent, and I think we know that her future will be overseas and hopefully at a high level. And um, it's again just looking after her, trying to teach her, and and let her learn and play. And and again, and at the end of the day, we all want to have fun. So. Match day for them is we want to win, but I think at, at their age they still want to enjoy before they enter the real depths of professional football. And that, not just for Danny, but for everyone. So we try to play an entertaining brand that's enjoyable. And I think till now the girls, they love it. And, and like I said, now they're starting to, to drive their own sessions. They drive the standards. And I think, yeah, it's a great group. And, and, it's, and Danny is just, and she's for a 16 year old, she's a big part of that as well.